Hi everyone, Hadi Family Grace here again, and after a while I'm back again, and this is not me going back on my consistency award. I was actually ready to prepare myself to have this particular tutorial. So away from the usual flow of trying to do things in real time, and yeah, it ties off um, slows things down. So what I've done instead is go back to do the necessary uh, preparation, do the necessary research, then come to you, then showcase what I found. So the last time we had an episode was on the global registry, which was quite straightforward. So that doesn't need any preparation. However, for the card network, noting the fact that the whole fintech exploration is quite new to me, I've never worked in a fintech environment before. This is just something I thought I should do based on the fact that we are using fintech every day. And I thought, okay, maybe this is how it works. So this is my submission of that idea. So due to that, I went back to do some research on how card networks work and after doing all that here is my uh, result there here is what i feel it should look like again i don't know how fintech really works these are my observations based on my usage based on what i feel it should look like so my screen now is just a simple landing page for what i call finsa and finsa in this case is a card network okay and just like MasterCards or Visa, you can also register with them. You see the screens like this with them telling other institutions or companies that, okay, they offer these services. The same thing with uh, FISA here, a simulated version. Uh, FISA is derived from the fact that everything we've been doing is kind of thing related. We have thing great. We have things are kind of relating to Visa. So yeah, enough of all that talk, we have on our screen what we are going to be looking at in a couple of episodes from now. And that's us creating the FINSA card network. And this is going to act as an interface through which our financial institutions, in the case of Fingrid, can create a card. So let's take a look at what we've designed so far. So this is just a simple landing page telling us what FINSA does. Unlock the power of payments, obviously that's not what it's doing, but I'm pretty sure you see this in most uh, of these card networks kind of publicizing what they do. And let's not dwell too much on this. Let's click on the Get Started. And the Get Started um, has this interface where you can either sign in or log in. So obviously you have you have decided to make use of Visa. And to use Visa, you have to create an account with them. So I currently have an account admin at admin.com. Secret. So it's loading, let's wait for it. All right. So by the way, you might see that the behavior is a little bit slow. So that's because I'm tunneling things. It's not really running from the direct server. So it's, I have a different server. This is me creating my own server, kind of. So it's a little bit slow. And after I've been out, logged in, we have this view and the view is saying card generation. We have this number and you can view. And we have just few things. At the moment, the settings is not linking to anywhere. We have a dashboard and we can log out once we are done here. So if I click on the view for card generation, I get to see information about the card um, info. So the issue identification number, the card starter. So what this has done is if we want to create our own card from our financial institutions, here is what it should start with. So that's what the card network has done for us. Then when you are setting this up, you add your KYC verification and registration and so on. So while this already has all the information we would have needed to set up, I would like to show us how we actually get into setting things up. So I'll log out from this account and instead set up a new one. So I'm going to create a deferry great at fingrates.com. So obviously this is what a Fingrates kind of um, administrator account would look like. So someone from Fingrates trying to register into FISA in order to allow them to start generating cards. So again, I'm going to have my basic password and sign up. So registration successful. Um, yeah, this is not a complete flow. Naturally, you should have um, redirected you back to the sign in because now you have your registration completed. So probably in the next few episodes we're going to have, we're going to do that in the right manner and we get the old flow. So now that I have my account, I can sign in. So once you click sign in, you can't do anything again. So this looks like we still have to fix something because we have a new user and as such, you should not have that information. So those are the things you probably have to fix. 
So naturally, as a new user, you're supposed to be presented with this interface where you decide on what service you want to carry out. So it can either be a card generation service or a payment gateway integration. At the moment, we don't have the payment gateway, but that will be a future thing. So now our presentation is going to be on the card generation, which we can click on setup. So it's going to require your business name, which is in this case, Fingrix. The business email, we can have admin at thingbreeds.com. The business type is a limited liability. The business website, thingbreeds.com. And the business address is thingbreeds address. Okay, so let's assume this add the information for our business. We can click on next. So now this is where things are actually going to be more important. So the API key, encryption key, and API endpoint. So I'm going to discuss all this as we move on. I think it's not really time to do that. So this is going to be more of an introduction into what we are going to be achieving. So let's not bother too much about what an API key or so is. Then we have the encryption key, then we have the endpoint. So let's just have this. Then we click on submit. And once we click on submit and everything is done, we have this interface saying that, okay, now we have the card generation service. The interface might not look like the best deal, but obviously this works. So again, we can view to take a look at the card information. So here is the issuer ID and here is the card starter. So you know that whenever you want to generate a card for a user, you have to start your card with this. So this information will be used later on to interface with payment gateway to resolve a uh, connection to your um, financial institution. Then also here is your KYC. So technically the KYC is going to be kind of verified to know if you are a capable venture to actually use the service and so on. And here is your API registration and this is going to be used to either encrypt um, the information going to be sent to you because obviously we need to do that. Same thing from the gateway, the need to encrypt the information going to be sent to the um, card network. Then the API key, which kind of allow them to do whatever they want to do with you. And finally, your endpoint itself. So also you can edit if there's an update you need to carry out. And that's it. That's literally what we are going to be uh, achieving in the couple of episodes we are going to be looking at. And just to give you an idea of the technology we're going to be using. So we are still going to maintain GoLang for our back end. However, due to the nature of what we want to achieve uh, here, we are going to be looking into some of the complex parts of Go, such as the mutes, the uh, weight group, and Go routine in general. Then also for this, the front end is built on Angular. We are going to be using Angular. And I'm not a fan of Angular myself, but with the release of the recent Angular 17, which tends to be much more cleaner than the unnecessarily tedious uh, former Angular, I thought it's something to just check out. And that's why we are going to be looking at that. And that's it for this video. See you in the next episodes and bye for now.